Hello YouTube, this is a review of the Estes Mercury Redstone Liberty Bell 7 model rocket kit. Now, I'm going to preface this and just say it. I like this kit quite a bit. It's a cool build, it's a fun build, and it looks a lot like um, what it's supposed to be. And it flies fairly well. Some, some comments on that that I'll get to, but overall I do recommend this kit. Um, if we look at it, it's a 1 to 34th scale model of the historic NASA vehicle, the Mercury Redstone Liberty Bell 7. Now, a brief history of uh, the Liberty Bell or the Mercury Redstone. The Mercury Redstone was the first American rocket to take an American astronaut to space. Um, they all flew suborbitally, so they didn't get into orbit yet. Uh, around this time of the space race, we were still behind the Russians a little bit. But I mean, in the end, we got to the moon first. That's what matters. The Liberty Bell 7 was the second mission of the uh, Mercury Redstone. It was flown by Gus Grissom, and it's kind of most well known for, for like an incident involving the capsule. Uh, after splashdown, the hatch was blown, but it took on water. The capsule, you know, sunk to the depth. If you've seen the red stuff, you know this. Um, eventually, the capsule was recovered, but yeah, that's kind of the history behind this. Um, I'm kind of curious to know why they chose the Liberty Bell as opposed to the Freedom, which I feel like would be like the more, you know, standard choice, right? Because that's the first one ever flown. That's kind of well known. The Liberty Bell is a little bit more, you know, it's like less common to me. But I think it's interesting. And also, really, besides this decal right here, it can kind of represent any of the Mercury Redstone missions. Um, anyways, as for the build, uh, looking at, this is like just a pretty solid big body too. There's these launch legs that are kind of a little bit off. You know, a lot of other kits, the uh, launch legs are like glued right to the body tube. There's a little bit of spacing between them. That's just so the rod doesn't get caught on the lip right here. As you can see, it just kind of comes out a little bit. Um, the motor mounts all, you know, like standard stuff. Um, interestingly, it's an 18 millimeter uh, motor mount, which, I mean, given the size of this rocket, the diameter, it's a little bit surprising, and that's kind of the major gripe with this kit, which I'll get to. It's not a huge one, but it's like the main one for this kit, because otherwise, it's a pretty good kit. Uh, the fins are kind of interesting. Looking at, like, the balsa wood sheet, you'll see that there's eight sets of fins. That's because you take them, you cut them out, and you, like, glue them together. You kind of double stack them, so they're extra thick. Um, as for the nose cone, uh, which is like the capsule and the launch escape system, it kind of comes in this sprue of this like red plastic right here. The fit, you know, and it's like a, you know, like any regular like model, um, you know, like you've ever built like model planes and that kind of thing. It's like the same thing. The fit's a little iffy, a little janky, but with some like plastic glue, plastic cement, it comes together just fine. It all paints really well as well. Um, so does the whole body. Um, I will say, well, like, looking at this, this is a decal. This is, like, the hardest decal to put on. You can probably guess it's all water slide decals, and then this giant wraparound one. It's a little bit tricky. You just need to use a lot of water to, like, kind of, I don't know, get it on. This, these are all decals. This bottom section right here is not a decal, however. Uh, that's also kind of a tricky part. I kind of did it wrong. If you look at the card, really the front is supposed to be like this, this, like, you know, four quadrant kind of shape. And then, you know, there'd be like the United States right here, but I kind of misaligned it. So it's like all black and then black. Uh, they, there's like a diagram of what you're supposed to do in the instructions. Honestly though, um, if you don't get it exactly how it's shown, it's fine. I think each of the Mercury Redstone missions had like different checkerboard patterns, you know, going on. Like, I don't even think this was ac accurate, you know, the, the um, checkerboard like this was accurate to the Liberty Bell itself. I think the Liberty Bell actually had the left side was black here and then white and then like I think this was all black here. So a little different, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, do it how you wish. Um, painting is pretty easy. You gotta kind of hand paint it, I think is what I would recommend, and just use like masking tape, painter's tape. It's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. Um, this is also some extra like wooden balsa wood detailing. Um, as for the internals, popping this open, long, nice long uh, elastic or like rubber band shot cord, SD's classic, you know, this is a 15 inch parachute, which I think is perfect for this kit. Um, 
I really don't like it when Estes goes like above the 50 inch parachutes because a lot of their kits are pretty light, pretty small. And then like 18 inches is usually overkill. So it's good that they included 15. I mean, this of all kits could have used 18, honestly, because it's a little heavier and it doesn't go that high. So I think 18 wouldn't be pushing it, but I'm not gonna complain about 15 at all. Um, but this kind of gets me to like my main complaint. This is obviously like a scale kit and like most of the value comes with the build and the display value. But for launching it, it gets a little tricky. If you look at it here, it says soars up to 200 feet, which is not like crazy high uh, by any means, but that's fine again. But you'll see there's only two motors that you can really use, the C63 and the C53. The C63 is really hard to find now. And the C53 is also very hard, but I did get a um, pack. Beforehand, I was like planning on just going with like a regular like C65, and I thought it should be fine, but definitely get a, a three second delay motor if you wanna launch this because even the three seconds is a little slow, as you'll see in the launch videos. I do wanna talk about these real quick, the C53s. Um, <clears throat> the three second delay motors are kinda hard to come by now, because probably there just aren't many rockets that will need a three second delay in a C motor. Most rockets of this size will probably just go for like a D motor or like a 24 millimeter mount, and then that would take like a five second delay or so. I mean, this is pretty, pretty low power for a rocket of this size. Um, but I mean, if you look at it, it's kind of a unique motor. They bring at the Super C with 50% more like max thrust or whatever, more thrust. I don't know if I really believe that completely. Interesting, it has like the blue motor plugs, which is pretty rare for SCs. I think it's only these motors that use the blue ones. Kind of neat little detail. But if we do look at the thrust curve here, you will be able to see, let me use this little red thing as a problem. The uh, C5 right here, it does have a pretty high max thrust, like 22, 23 newtons. That's pretty high. That's, I mean, the same as the C11s. So it does really pack a punch, which is needed to really get something this big off the pad, you know? Because um, a thick rocket like this, you, you need to have the speed coming off the pad. Otherwise, you risk, you know, a lot of instability. That's like the big thing. So I definitely do think this, this motor works for it. Um, even then, still, the delay is a little slow. The thing really does not go that high. When it still goes high, you'll see in the videos, it doesn't, like, it doesn't just, like, shoot up and then, like, fall down. It does, like, go up a decent bit, but relative to other rockets, it's not that high of a flyer. I think it's a pretty good kit for, like, a windy day, maybe. Though, I mean, it kind of weathercocked a little bit when I launched it. You'll see in the video, um, <clears throat> which actually we'll, we're about to go show you. Um, I got three different angles of this launch, one like on a phone camera, one on like a GoPro right next to the uh, launch pad, which I think is a pretty cool footage. Uh, you just get to see the launch in slow-mo. There's also a 360 camera, which we use to like track the launch. So you guys will see that. I think the launch did go well for this kit. I mean, it's stable. It, I feel like it weather cocked just a little bit, but nothing uh, too major. Um, I do recommend this kit. The build's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun like getting it decorated. If you like scale models, or if you want to get into scale models, I think this is, like in model rocketry, I think this is a great starting point. Um, so before getting to the launches, let me just say like and subscribe if you enjoyed the review. Thanks for watching.
series. Two.